so I think it's important as we discuss growth to really define what growth is. So growth is not just growing taller, but I think it's important that, uh, to mention that we also want our patients to reach their full genetic potential in terms of puberal development. And one uh, aspect that is often unrecognized is they should have normal body composition as well because many of our patients have significant deficits in lean body mass, which affects all kinds of biological parameters, including response to treatment as well as skeletal health. So this is a study that was published by Marianne Pfefferkorn from the uh, Pediatric IBD Collaborative Research Registry, showing that high Z scores do not change uh, meaningfully with usual combination therapy with induction of steroids followed by an immunomodulator over a period of two years. But one note of caution here, and that is the parameters that are used to measure success and growth. So we are used to seeing a, a height Z score or a height standard deviation score as a benchmark for success or failure in growth, and certainly one aspect of it, but it's uh, one that is fairly static. And um, if any of us is considering a study in growth, it's good to consider doing a height uh, uh, velocity Z score, which is a more dynamic measurement and perhaps more informative moving forward. Some of these kids, for example, could have grown later, and this is not captured by the data. As Dr. Baldassano alluded, the um, growth in patients with uh, IBD, especially Crohn's disease, is subject to a multi-prong attack. So there is certainly a nutritional aspect to consider, also nutri nutrition utilization, as well as decreased physical activity, decrease in pubertal maturation, both uh, testosterone and estrogen levels can be low, decrease in transcription of IGF-1 in the liver in response to growth hormone stimulation, and uh, inflammation um, attacking the bones themselves. So this is a very complex landscape um, that we need to be aware of. So what are the tools? Well, certainly the growth charts that we have available in clinic health but menstrual history has to be asked in, in a very systematic way. Uh, some people would consider it the fifth vital sign. Um, doing bone age routinely as part of standard of care has been proposed by Dr. Neera Gupta and others, um, and I agree with that um, uh, assessment. And then, of course, the Tanner stage, which can be um, self-determined by children in a very reliable way or by physicians. And finally, uh, methods like DEXA or peripheral QCT to understand uh, skeletal health and muscle mass. So um, Dr. Baldassano already showed us the risk data, so I'm just gonna layer a couple of additional studies, <clears throat> excuse me, to just make the point that biologics actually are associated with increased in height Z scores and height velocity. So in panel A, uh, you see uh, baseline and then six month data uh, showing an improved height standard deviation score and on panel C, the height velocity following a similar trend. This is another earlier study showing pre and post infliximab data uh, with infliximab concerning um, standard deviation Z scores as well for height. And this study, which I think is important by Peter Church and Ann Griffiths in Toronto, showing us the um, influence of Tanner staging on growth potential. And of course, kids who are uh, more mature, like Tanner four and five, are going to have uh, difficulty in growing significantly more, even with infliximab on board. Whereas kids captured in the earlier Tanner stages have the ability to catch up, as shown in the black bars of this slide. Nonetheless, please note on the left that after two years, their uh, standard deviation is still negative compared to normal. So it's a good answer, but perhaps not a perfect answer. Also, please note that there is a relatively short window of opportunity. Most of our patients are diagnosed as 12 to 13 year olds. So uh, the growth plates in girls will close at about 15 years of age and in boys at 17 years of age. So there is a narrow window of opportunity 
which can quickly go away. 30 minutes of slide making gone there in three seconds. <laughs> So um, this is again the mean height z-score um, and what I'd like to uh, bring to your attention is the concept of considering infliximab early in the course of the disease. This point was made by Dr. Baldassano in an earlier talk and uh, you know, looking at the advantage of instituting uh, early infliximab therapy in those patients who have growth failure, it's certainly advantageous compared to when it's introduced later in the course of the disease. Lastly, um, composition in uh, terms of muscle and skeletal health are frequently unappreciated, but also positively influenced by the treatment with infliximab, and th these are data from Dr. Valdesano's group, showing in panel A the baseline data for cortical bone on the upper panel, and then for trabecular bone in the lower panel, and you can appreciate how the bone actually gets remodeled gets thicker, sturdier, and the muscle mass that surrounds the bone also becomes more abundant and stronger. So these are also beneficial effects of having inflammation under good control with infliximab. So what are the take home points? Infliximab and other biologics that attack TNF, we don't have yet data with vitalizumab uh, or others, uh, improves linear growth, bone modeling and remodeling, and body composition is restored to normal, particularly uh, deficits in lean body mass. Thank you.